Can you see my screen well? Uh, yeah, I can see it. <clears throat> All right. Okay, now I'm working with the new Blender. Yay. So the modules aren't exactly ready yet, but um, in, in a few days, we're going to release the modules. So whatever you see here, you can still do in 2.835, but I've just retweaked a few um, scripts and codes to make things more streamlined. Okay, and that, that's the whole purpose of moving to the new Blender. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a file and I've, I've saved a few files because we don't need to see the everything going, um, doing the, the entire thing over and over again. Now this is a PLY file and um, we can actually see the colors, I think. Yeah, so we can see the colors, but we're going to disregard the colors. Colors are nice, but you know, to work with colors, it's just, to me, it doesn't make sense because we need to sculpt and, and everything. Now, this one was brought in and it is an orthodontic case, but we can see the teeth are out of occlusion on both sides and the, the two front teeth are a little bit, the, the, the ratio, I'm not happy with the tooth ratio. So there's quite a few things we need to do on this thing. So I'll just open up another file to, to show more or less what it looks like in the end, okay? So this is what I've got in the end and we can see the, the tooth anatomy looks really quite nice. Okay, let's get started. Now, it is not exactly straightforward because you, you're gonna need more than these modules to make a tooth library because we've got to sculpt teeth. We've got to do quite a lot of things. So to start off with, we're going to move this into the center of Blender. So we're gonna do this as, as per usual with the model designer. Okay, we're gonna flip it and put it to the center, so P key, and we should all be <clears throat> sort of familiar with this procedure. Align that, all right, and then we're going to flip this over on the Y axis like that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to, I'm using the articulator and the wax up and the model designer for making a tooth library. We're going to then um, bring in the mounting plate in, in the articulator. So I'm going to name this upper and name this lower. And we need to mount this, okay? So the, the purpose of this is to get the teeth in the correct alignment. Okay, so I'm going to view it from the top. I'm going to view it from the bottom as well. I'm going to move this thing through to the stopper because ideally what we want to do is this tooth library, when we bring it in, it should snap to where they should be. And then we're going to view it from the right hand side. That that all looks that looks okay to me like this. Okay. So that's that's the first step. We're going to delete, we can delete the mounting table or we can hide the mounting table. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to create a model, okay? So as usual, we're going to go to the model designer. I'm going to hide the top model for now. And we're going to just trim and arch cut this. Now we're all familiar with how this works, so I don't, really need to go into that, but we then click the arch cut and then we'd, we'd go all the way around the tooth and make our models. So I'm just gonna open the file where we have already made the model bases. Okay, so that's what it looks like. <clears throat> now, the reason why I've chose this one is because the teeth are actually quite nice. If you look at the anatomy of them, um, so if you do make one, choose one where you've got some nice teeth. I mean, we don't want to replace worn teeth on a patient. So um, choose a nice one. Now, when you're choosing a scan, <clears throat> you don't particularly need all the teeth to be 100%. 
if they are, we're going to just pick out the teeth that we want to pick out, that we want to use. Um, bear in mind, we're going to do a lot of mirror imaging. So we don't necessarily need, we can pick this tooth and then we can pick this tooth and we can pick this tooth. We only need an, a quadrant. We're only going to cut out a quadrant. We're not going to cut out each and every tooth. Okay, so that's important to understand. Um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to engage in the cutting procedure. So this takes a bit of time, but I have saved a file. But just to demonstrate, I'll do, I'll do a quadrant. <clears throat> so in the model designer here, we're going to go draw gum line. And then we're going to extrude this, okay? Now, we're going to do a few teeth at the same time. So we're going to go all the way around like this. And we're going to fuse this on the other side. And I'm going to do the gum lines now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one. I'm going to shift D to duplicate it. Okay, now you don't see it at the moment, but if I go extrude, it comes out. Now here we've got a bit of tissue, which we should actually get rid of later on because it's not complete. The tooth hasn't erupted completely. Now, when we're separating teeth, when we've got a contact, which is tricky, I mean, these, this contact is very shallow. So we don't actually have to penetrate through this contact. So I'm gonna go all the way around it like this, okay? And I'm going to fuse it on the side. I'm gonna take another one of these vertices, shift D and notice that I'm going, I'm skipping one tooth. So, and this is because we don't, we, we not, we don't, I'm not gonna do adjacent teeth because I want to just do the contact once, okay? So this does seem to help, especially if you've got tricky, tricky contacts. Okay, like this. One more. So shift D, left click, and then you'll you'll see the vertice here. So as soon as I go extrude, you'll see it appear. Okay. So what we're doing now is we're drawing the gum line. And then we're going to click mark, mark, mark the gum line, okay? So if the gum line, if you've got a contact like this, you have to extrude all the way through it, okay? <clears throat> so if I, if I just draw a quick diagram, so if you, if you look at a contact and it, contact looks like that, we're gonna go straight across like I have done. If the contact looks, you know, like all wonky like this, we then put the vertices through it because our cutting tool, we, we're designing a cutting tool here. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Okay. okay, so now we've got that done, we're going to click on mark gum line. That'll make them all pink. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to, left click here and offset contact line, which will offset this line, which I'm drawing at this moment. Okay. So in this example, we only have one contact that is like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on enclose contacts. Notice that this contact has enclosed. Now we're going to make sure that all of the vertices are above the actual line. If they're not, use a G key and just move it up a little bit. It's very important. Otherwise, it's not going to cut through your teeth. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go enclose base. And this is enclose the base. And we're going to remove, remove tooth. Okay. So then We'll just let it do its thing. All right, so we've successfully managed to put these teeth, remove them. 
Okay, so this one hasn't removed itself for some reason, this one here. So it's still connected. So I'm just going to go back a few steps and I'll just see why this hasn't done it. Okay. And that's because I have forgotten to go over this contact. So I'm going to offset this contact and then E to extrude, and we're going to go over this one as well. So click on this one. Uh, sorry, I've got to go one step back still. Go, going to go a few step backs. <clears throat> so it's quite important to not forget anything. Okay, like this. Like, like that, that should be okay. Go here, offset this one, extrude across. like that, enclose the contacts like that. <clears throat> and then we're going to then enclose the base and we're going to try this again, uh, remove the tooth. All right, so here we've successfully um, cut all of those teeth off Yeah, And I'm going to move them into different collections. So M to move, new collection, and we'll just say upper teeth, upper teeth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide these. Okay, so here I'm going to take the filter off and hide like that, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly the same with the teeth that I choose. So if you choose on the other side, choose the teeth on the other side, okay? So that's how we're going to remove the teeth. Then I'm going to open up a file where I've removed them. So here the teeth are, have all been removed from both quadrants. And this is then what they, they would look like here and there. Okay. And we can hide the, the upper model and the lower model. Note how I'm using these collections so that I can hide and view things very, very easily. Okay. Now you'll see that the, the tops have been closed. Okay, these teeth are all closed. Um, we want to change this. Now I'm going to go into the wax up and this is where I've streamlined this a little bit in 2.931 so that we can very quickly change these into bullet shape. Okay, but before I do that, I'm going to use the A key. Notice that we, we've got these groups, one, two, and three, and then we've got one, two, three, four teeth there. A to select all, and we're going to separate these. So in the model designer or anywhere else where you see the separate, separate objects, click on this one. If you, if you don't want, and here's a trick, this is a blender way of doing it without these. You can go A and then you can go, um, you can go tab, tab, then A, you, we are in edit mode, A, then click P on the keyboard and then you click loose parts. So we can separate the selection or material or by loose parts. So if you click on loose parts, it will then separate them all into their, their units, okay? So this is how, we unlink objects that have been linked together, okay? And I'll do this again later on to, to show how this works. Now that they've separated, in the wax up module, we're going to change this to bullet shape. Now, if we're changing to bullet shape, we need to move it to a certain path, like a direction, because it extrudes from my eyesight into the computer. So we're going to go here where the blue menu is over here. And we're going to now change to bullet shape, okay? So look what that's done. So it's extruded it this way around. So in edit mode, it looks something like this, okay? And that's what we want to do. But we're going to extrude these 
these teeth a few times. So here, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to click here, change to bullet shape. So if you guys aren't familiar with the wax up module, we can now open these. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to open this tooth, tooth, here I can open the mesh. So there's a lot we can do here. So like just off the topic, if we wanted to make a, like a temporary shell, I can click on this one and make a temporary shell, for example, and then smooth it on the inside. See, so there's, there's quite a lot we can do here. But so we can open it, we can close these, I can close the tooth mesh again. Okay, this is open. So, okay, we'll just, we can close this tooth mesh. We can change to bullet shape or, or ridge lap or whatever. So let's just change it to bullet shape like that. And we're gonna go through each and every one of these. Okay, there. Now, don't extrude it this way around like this because it's going to come out this way. So we don't want that. We want it done nicely. So close tooth mesh again and change to bullet shape. All right. Now here on this one here, we see a little bit of a rip. So I don't, I don't want these, these rips to be in our tooth library. So I'm going to just open this one up open and we're going to just go into edit mode so we can go into the model design if we want to and we can go fast edit use the c key and we can just get rid of a few of these and then delete it okay then we can go back into the wax up module and i'm going to close this tooth mesh close tooth mesh okay you can see how it's actually rounded it nicely and then we're going to change the bullet shape. And I'm going to do the last one like this, change the bullet shape. So here we've got all of these teeth that have like little roots on them, okay? But you can see they are, are crooked and then they're misaligned and all of that stuff. So once this is done for the top and bottom, we're going to then continue aligning these teeth. So let's just, find the next one so here extruded okay now this this is what it sort of looks like but we need to change the alignment and all of that stuff now we know we have already put it on the articulate mounting plate which is good but now if 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 you're an orthodontist and you know how these teeth are meant to be spaced and aligned, you've got a very good advantage there. Uh, for those of us that have done a lot of denture work, we also sort of know a little bit about how to put these things in. Now, we need to mirror image these teeth, and this is very important, but you'll, note, you'll notice that the point of origin for the teeth is not where we need them to be. So in order for us to mirror teeth, we need the point of origin to be in the center of blender. Now note, if I go shift S, shift S on the keyboard is very, very important. It brings up a menu where we can decide where we want the cursor to go, okay? So here I'm going to put cursor to world origin. So this puts it into the center of Blender. Now we don't see the, the, the cross, the X and Y axis, because it's been hidden. We can always unhide them if we want to by checking this box over here. The cursor is exactly where we need it to be. But we need, if we want to mirror image teeth, we need the point of origin to be in the center of Blender. Otherwise, it will mirror image on top of each other or somewhere where you don't want it to be. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to go and open up the, the properties window. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, to then click on this specific one. But I'm going to go A to select all of these. 
and then we're going to go right click and then we're going to put a set origin set origin for all of these teeth to the 3d cursor okay so notice now that whichever one i click that little orange dot is in the center which means we can now mirror image these teeth I'm going to open up the modifier and I'm going to go to mirror, okay, so <clears throat> mirror, okay. Notice that the one that I've selected has mirrored, the other ones haven't, haven't mirrored yet, okay. Now I don't want to go through each and every one and do a modifier, okay, it's a waste of time. I'm going to click A to select all my teeth. We know one of them has been selected, that's important. Okay, one of them is an orange. I'm going to go Control L on the keyboard. Control L means we can link uh, materials like um, colors, for example, or other things, you know, um, data of animation, for example, or something. So Control L on the keyboard. And then we're going to go Copy Modifiers, and that will copy them all in one go. Okay. Now we've got an arch which has been mirror imaged. Okay. Now we need to align these teeth nicely. So we need to do some orthodontics on these teeth. So in order to do that, I'm going to bring in my orthodontic, um, like, a, like a chart, like a stencil thing. And that is found in our um, wax up module. So I'll just go and quickly look for it. Just give me a second. It's in the module folder. I've got this on my other screen. So I'll just bring that over here. Okay, so this is in the module folder. Okay, this is the wax up for 2.93. And this is a new one. And in the module folder, we have author template. Left click on that and drag it into your scene, okay? And then we can get rid of this one. Okay. Now, with it being selected, we're going to then, in the um, wax up module, we're going to then align this. So we're going to be looking here, drag and drop author template and click to place, okay? So it's placed it. Now, we want to move this so this this template has all different arch wires to it okay this is freely available on the internet you can download this it's a uh, i think it's a png file okay so if you've got your own arch shapes you can import those by all means now we're going to we're going to select an arch shape okay so the one that i found quite uh, quite regular um, an art shape is the the true form. The true form too has complied with a lot of shapes that I've looked at. So I'm going to use the G key and move this sort of in posi position. Okay, so you can already see the true fo form is up like very close, and I haven't even done anything. Now, when I move the scene, you'll see we can then we can move this up and down, and it's a bit like having an orthodontic wire put across the arch, which is absolutely amazing. When I first started doing this work, I thought, wow, this is just so incredible. <clears throat> so we can actually see the arch wire of, well, this stencil, and now we can move the teeth according to our arch shape, which is fantastic. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the top teeth first. Uh, I'm going to open the outline window again. And we're going to hide some of the teeth. Now, um, when we, okay, so we've got the upper teeth here and we've got the lower teeth here. Notice how I'm clicking on this thing that looks like a TV screen, okay, like this one here. If you don't see it, it's in the filter section. So, Make sure all of these are present and then you will be able to see it. So lower teeth. Now we want to, we, we can make this more transparent if you, if you want to. So if, if yours isn't transparent enough, go into the properties 
and we're going to go on this little one over here. And here the opacity, we can decide how opaque we want this thing to be. Now, with that being done, we're going to need to move these teeth, okay? Um, we're going to be using edit mode to move these teeth, not object mode, because the object, in object mode, the point of origin is here, okay? So if I move, if I use the G key, notice that, well, okay, so all of them have been locked, okay? This is something we have to unlock, but in edit mode, we don't have to unlock it. But if you move this object and edit in object mode, you're moving the point of origin and the mirroring goes out. So you don't want that. So click on one tooth and we're gonna go into edit mode, okay? So if your vertices aren't all selected, so control A to deselect, A to select all of them. Then we're going to move. So note the point of origin and edit mode stays the same. Okay, so we can do whatever we like. And so it's important to move these in edit mode. Okay, so we're going to be moving them. And to help you move them, it is often a good idea to open up a new window. So I'm going to open up a new window here. <clears throat> I'm clicking the N key to get rid of my menu. I'll put this upwards like this. A to select all of them. Now notice as I'm rotating, R to rotate, we can see it rotate on both screens. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. R to rotate, G to grab, and I'm moving them where I need this to move. Okay, so I'm going to, and, and this will take quite a, quite a bit of time for you to get the top arch where you want it to be. So let's do the next tooth, R to rotate. And this is where orthodontists have a fantastic advantage over in anyone else, I think. <clears throat> so I'm not that good with this, but I'll try my best, okay? So we're going to do this throughout the entire arch until we get this correct. So. I'm not going to be doing this because I'm going to be wasting our time, okay? Um, so I've, I've, I've pre-aligned them. Now, once we finish the top arch, we're going to hide the top arch and we're going to proceed with the bottom arch. So here, yeah, let's just hide the top, the lower arch, and we're going to do the same thing. Now, for some reason, these teeth have been put into a different collection. So if that happens, just be consciously aware what is going on. You can just simply move it into the other collection again. That's fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do the lower teeth. So I'm going to hide the template and we're going to then do the lower teeth. And again, we're going to do this all in edit mode, okay? <clears throat> So this takes a bit of time. So it does help if you've got a scan where the teeth are like extremely amazingly occluded. Okay. So that, that gives you a good advantage, but it's not, it's not that necessary. Here we can see also the, the teeth are completely wrong. So this tooth needs to be way backwards. So this one, we need to shift this one and we need to shift this one. So. Okay, so I, th I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm going to open up the next file. Wolfgang, are you still there? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to go to th the next file, which is here. I've aligned them, okay, to what I think looks quite nice. Okay. Um, so I'm going to close this window here, this one. I've got a few other windows open here, like that. Okay, let's hide this. Okay, so I've got them aligned here. Now, we've all got them still in the modifier. So the mirror modifier is on. Now, we need to commit and um, either have them. Um, we, we're going to use a mirror modifier 
a few times, okay? Now, the mineral modifier has something called clipping, okay, and merge. Now, when we do a tooth library, make sure, absolutely sure, that this merge is, you need to uncheck this merge, because if you don't, then the front teeth here are going to, are going to merge up. So, and then there will be one object, which we don't want, okay? Now, these here, we've copied the initial modifier, they have merged, but they, they don't touch each other. So I'm not too f fussed about that. So initially we should have unchecked this merge. Okay. Now I'm going to commit and do all, I'm going to do, apply all of this mineral modifier, but I don't want to do one tooth and the next tooth and the next tooth to apply it. So here's a trick. We're going to select all, A to select all, go to object, and we're gonna go convert to mesh. Now, when you do that, it will then apply all the modifiers on each single object, okay? So you can see none of them have modifiers on it. Now, these teeth are still connected, okay? I'm, I want to disconnect them. So A to select all, and we're going to go control J to join, or simply find this one here on the model designer join, and then we're gonna separate this, okay? Separate, now they're all individual. I'm going to again, delete half of them, X delete. Now you may say, why did you do this, Michael? We're, we're already there, we're almost there. And that's true because you've already got a tooth library, okay? But if you wanna be a perfectionist, you want to change this tooth library. I'll tell you why, because if we have something like here, so control I to choose the inverse, H to hide, okay? So here, for example, we've got this little bit here, okay? I don't want that in my tooth library. Also, I don't want my contacts looking like this. And perhaps I want to do some sculpting and some fissures. So there's quite a lot that we can still do. I'll just delete this template because we're done with it, okay? <clears throat> Here, for example, we've got an erupted, unerupted tooth, which we may want to sculpt. So this, this part engages in the sculpting of the whole thing. So I'm going to choose, I'm gonna choose a few teeth say for example, and I'm, I'm not going to sculpt all the teeth. So let's choose this one, for example, and we're going to go in the model designer and we're going to find the sculpting tool. So here, control left click to fold the menus <coughs> down. We're going to go control I. So learn your, your keys, your shortcuts. We have most of the, the keys here. So if you want to hide inverse or whatever, so control I, to select the inverse and H to hide, okay? So we've hidden all of the other ones. So we're gonna go to sculpt mode. And this is where you guys need to learn how to sculpt, okay? We have something called Dino Topo up top here. If you don't see this toolbar, <laughs> by the way, you go to view and there's tool, tools and tool settings, okay? So if you don't see that, you go to view, click tool settings, you need to be able to see this Dynotopa. And this is automatically selected when we do that. Now, Dynotopa means that as you sculpting, it remeshes it, okay? So you can pull mesh or you can do whatever. And this is quite important. So I use this all the time. Also, we have X, Y, and Z. So this has also been done with this button here. So if you go into sculpt mode from object mode, you may not have these selected. Then what I'm going to do is I can, I can sculpt this. I can, I can make it neat. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So we're just going to sculpt this nicely. Like that. All right, something like that. 
it's looking good. And then all the artifacts that we don't want, we, we can get rid of. Now, I'm not too bothered about the lower section. I'm gonna go into something called crease, okay? So I'm gonna open up this menu. And here we see, we, we're gonna look for this, and it says crease here. Now in the crease mode, we can right click and we can set the strength. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna set the strength to maximum. I'm gonna make this, this radius smaller, okay? And as I crease it, we can, Increase inside and outside. So if the minus is there, it will make a wedge in. If it's plus, it'll make a wedge out. Okay, so here what I can do is we can, I'll take this up maximum strength and you, you can see, okay, it's, it's not doing exactly what I want. So we're going to just tweak a few things. I'll take the pinch up to all the way. And we're going to, okay, that's still not doing what I wanted to do. Strength. Okay, I'll just have a look at the mesh. Okay, the mesh structure, we can change. I'm going to change it. So if, if you find something's not working exactly, the, the more that you have vertices, the, the, the more effect the, the sculpting tools are. Okay, so... So keep that in mind. So in wax up and the new wax up module, I've included something called uh, it's we can we got voxel remesh, but we've got something called resolution. So if I make a resolution of four, and this is what the crown and bridge work module uses as well, I'm gonna, gonna go sculpt remesh, and then we're going to apply, and that'll make the mesh consistent all over like this. Okay which will then allow me to sculpt nice. And, but you can use this one on all teeth in one go. So you can select all the teeth. We're gonna go back, we're gonna go sculpt, and I'm going to look for this crease again. And let's see if I can get it to do what I want it to do. It's not, still not doing, maybe I should just do the pinch a little bit different. Nope, it's not doing what I wanted to do. Okay, so it's just pushing in there. Maybe the string. Yeah, okay, so make the way just a bit. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Okay, so we, we're just gonna have to make the radius very small. Okay, and the strength up. Yeah, so just just experiment a little bit with it to to what you want it. Yeah, this is this is better. Okay, so we can then we can then increase we can increase and we do what, what we want to do, okay. So, okay, so you sort of know what, um, here what I'm trying to get at. And then, okay, so once we've got all of these teeth sculpted, we're going to then do something else. So Alt H, we're gonna take the teeth and we're going to, we're going to cut them, okay. So Shift right click, <clears throat> we're gonna go to the crown menu, and we go in the model designer, we're going to go to the arch cutting tool. So this is very important because um, the teeth may not have been extruded 100%. So we're going to recreate a contact. So click arch cutting, and then we're going to E to extrude, and we're going to extrude this to where we want the tooth to end. Okay, so, okay, like something like that, like that, and we're going to trim it. Then select the tooth mesh that you want to keep, which is over here, and then we're going to click on clean. And so we're going to do this for each and every one, okay? So this does take some time. 
So this one, okay, we we haven't we haven't yet we haven't yet um, remeshed and we haven't sculpted it. I'll just do this here like this, and we're going to apply that, <clears throat> and I'm going to just sculpt this, just smooth that out a little bit like that, like that. The contact like this. That's that's looking good. Exit. Arch cutting tool. Extrude. Like that. Okay. F trim and clean like that. Okay, so eventually we're going to end up with an entire new new quadrants, upper and lower. And then once we've got all of these done, we're going to go back into the wax up module and we're going to extrude them nicely into our roots. Okay, so into the blue menu here, we're going to close the mesh first and then change to bullet shape. This one, close, change to bullet shape. Okay. So then we end up with beautiful teeth all the way around like that. Okay. So I'm just gonna open the, the next file. Here, here are the teeth that have been sculpted. Okay, so. You can see I've actually gotten the crease tool to work quite nicely like that. Okay. And finally, we need to mirror image them one more time, one last time. But because we've moved them in edit mode, we need to do one uh, step more. We need to select all of these teeth and then we can we need to go object, apply, transforms. Okay, this is important because if I mirror image the teeth now, I'll just show you what happens. Okay, so, okay. We need to put them, we need to put the um, point of origin, shift S, like what I've done earlier. Cursor to the world, right click, set origin to 3D cursor, okay? And then control L to link, copy modifiers. Okay, now this worked, this worked okay. So if you if you find a tooth that has is not mirrored correctly, simply click on apply, transforms, all transforms, and that will then put it into the correct position. Okay, so this is basically your tooth library. There's one more thing that I want to do, and that is I want to make, I want to check the tooth ratio. So in the, in the um, wax up module, we've got something called ratio here. I'm going to click on that, okay. Now this is also quite important so we can get a nice tooth library because your teeth may be un, not erupted correctly, um, not completely erupted or something like that. So this is the tooth ratio. It's a 78% ratio. We've got another one, 82% ratio. So I'm gonna scale this out a little bit. And I'm particularly interested in the two front teeth. So here we see the laterals where the, and the centrals where the, 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 the crown and the root end. So I'm not 100% happy with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm gonna click on this and we're gonna scale this upwards a little bit. So I'm gonna use S for scale and then Z. And we're gonna scale them up and I'm gonna move them up a little bit like this. So basically to get the ratio correct, I'm going to even scale it a little bit more slender, okay? And use a G key like that. And we're going to do the same thing for this side. So scale Z upwards a bit, 
and then use a G key and position it. So we want to get a, a, a nicer tooth ratio if we can get that. So that's, that's quite important so we can follow this procedure as well. When you're done with that, click on delete the, the ratio set like this. And then we can, we can commit to this. Again, I, I'd like to stress that, make sure the merge sign is off over here, especially for the two front teeth. A to select all, object, convert, convert to mesh, which applies all the, the modifiers. Then what we're going to do is we're going to export these teeth. So I'm going to join these teeth up, A, control J, or find yourself in the model designer, the join up top here, it says join, join teeth. And we're going to now go to file, export, and we're going to, if, you, if you're using the component module, we're going to be exporting as OBJ. If you're using STL, you're going to go STL, click selection only, and then name your tooth library. But if you're using the component module and you want to integrate it in that, file, export, OBJ. It says wavefront OBJ. Now, this is very important. You need to note this that you're going to click selection only, click this one, objects, and then in geometry, we're going to go all the way down. We, we don't need to apply the modifiers, they've already been applied. Uncheck all of these boxes, but you need to check this one. Keep vertex order, super, super important. And then click on OBJ. So name your tooth library. So I'll just say youthful, and export, okay? So this, this will take a little bit of time, okay? And now we've got these ready for our component module, if you wanna use them. Now, if we want to hollow them out, we need to do one additional step. So I'm going to go tab again, A, P, by, by loose parts, this separates them, or click on the separate button in the model designer. We're going to go B, box select, X to delete, and then we need to open these up. So in the wax up module, go back down here where it says open mesh, open, open all of these up like this. Okay, so we can do all of them in one go. Open, yep, like that. A to select all, mirror modifier, okay, control L, copy modifiers, okay, objects, object, convert to mesh, applies all the modifiers, control J to join or find in the model designer, that little button here, join, file, export, OBJ, and then do exactly what I've said before, which is done, and then say hollow, hollow teeth, and export. Okay, so here we've got both of our tooth libraries finished. So there was a lot to absorb. Um, hopefully you guys have learned some tricks. Wolfgang, you have recorded the session, hey? Yes, I have. Okay, so we can um, pick up from the video if there's anything that needs to, to be discussed then still. Excellent. Well Excellent. Done, All right. Um, I will email everybody the tooth library. And um, if you don't get it, just email me and then you've got a, an extra tooth library which you can use. Super. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. Like a lot of new tricks uh, tonight. Learn a lot. Yeah, a couple of shortcut keys that we can um, get out of it, which is great. And the mirror modifier, which is fantastic. I've used it for other things already and it's very useful. About the crease in the skirt mod, I think that you model just doesn't have enough vertices to allow a good sculpting when you try it. 
Uh, what I do is I do a smooth with the Dinotopo applied, so it just remesh it, and you have a lot of uh, complexity in the mesh, or you can also make, uh, with the wax left, you can change uh, the density, uh, so it's better to sculpt um, when you have a lot of vertices. I see. Yeah, no, that, that, there's, quite a, there's quite a bit, but once you understand how it works, it's not that difficult. I mean, you, you can...